Uh, good evening, this is Luther P40. I am uh, showing you uh, what I came up with for a measuring device. Uh, I've never had any success with those floating tubes and the little rocket bottles. Uh, I, I mean, they seem too consistent. I don't have a... My system's not set up well enough that I can't get a regular measurement every single time. And what I came up with is this device right here. It's extremely simple. It's just a simple uh, tube going into it with a second hole in it and the whole principle is that this is filled up with water and you just fill it up and it blows the water out this small hole down at the bottom and give you a quick look at how it uh, is assembled basically it's just a just a piece of and this in my in my case is a piece of quarter inch uh, tubing with a hole drilled out I got a 3 8 inch hole drilled out and I believe the second hole is 3 16 of an inch diameter uh, the whole purpose of this is not so much to compete with you guys but is I needed a, I need to have a way to to know if I'm going forward or if I'm going backwards and this is the most accurate way that I can think of where I'm always going to be evacuating the same amount of, of volume every single time the bottle size itself this particular bottle is 500 milliliters and you can see where the mark is uh, I only put that mark on there for your demonstration for demonstration purposes if I ever say I do 500 milliliters what I've really done is I've evacuated this entire bottle uh, so technically it's uh, I want to say it's approximately 40 more milliliters to fill it to, to complete the bottle so but if, if you ever see me comparing this I'll be saying that this is a 500 milliliter container and I'm evacuating the entire thing and this is basically how it assembles. Let me demonstrate how this works. I've got a, I got a little my, my test cell running. It's percolating right now. It's in there warming up. It's not. I mean, the, <clears throat> the the test here is not to demonstrate the cell. The test here is to demonstrate the way that I'm measuring it. So uh, let me put the cap back on. Well, the way this would work is you submerge the bottle completely. fill it up completely so it's completely full no air in it you put the cap back on I apologize for this I should have put this on the tripod hold on a second sorry about that Okay, the bottle submerged, and I don't know if you can see it, but the tube itself has got water in it. The purpose of having water in the tube itself is it allows it to be hands-free. You've got the, the entire volume submerged. You've got the hose is actually looped down underneath, going underneath, and coming up into the bottle. Let me get a light where you can see better. bottle is submerged completely there's no air pockets well I got a little, little air bubble in there somewhere there's a little one but this is just a demonstration it's not a scientific test and the water level the tube is actually submerged actually filled with water the, the, the water the tube being filled with water is actually an advantage to you because when you take this end of the hose now you've got time to put this on put this on the end of your put this on the end of your device and then come over here and push the start and stop button. So I'm going to push re reset clear on my stopwatch. So my stopwatch is waiting on me. My setup is ready to go. And my tank is bubbling away waiting for me to put a hose on it. And now I'm going to put the hose on here. It starts pushing air down and I get ready to push my stop button and start my stopwatch when the air starts coming out of the when it starts coming out of the tube that's when my stopwatch starts and the time runs well this is like slow motion in it anyways that's how you start the thing I'm gonna cheat here in a minute in, in a minute I don't want to have to make you waste your time. Watch this thing all the way to the end. Let me uh, let me uh, cheat a little bit here. Hold on. 
one second. Let me dump out some of that water. I just want to see how you, that's, this is how you would start the, start the test. In other words, that's when you would start the timers, when the air started coming out the bubbles. Or the air started coming into the tank. And when you would stop the stopwatch, let me put you down for a second. So I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm going to dump some water out because I don't want you to waste all your time. Alright. Now, assuming that this had been running for assuming that this had been running for half an hour or whatever, however long it takes you to fill this thing up, the way this would work is that your timer would stop when the last little bit of water was dumped out and it would start evacuating out of that small hole. And the way you would do this is you would just lean this ever so slightly away from where the hose comes in. You know, every time I put these things, every time I put these things on camera, these things always go slow. Right. I apologize for the camera work. This is poor camera work. Now, see, if you're looking to to market at five mill five hundred milliliters, you would have had to have all this exactly perfect. I, and I don't really care about the five hundred milliliter part. I want to have a constant volume that I'm evacuating. So once that thing's once that's once that's completely empty, the air is going to start leaking out, or the gas is going to start coming out that that eighth inch hole. That would be the point in time when you would push the stopwatch to turn it back off. And with the if I wasn't holding the camera. This really would be hands, almost hands-free. You wouldn't. I mean, you've got time to come over and push your stopwatch, and all you have to do is babysit it right at the end. I mean, you can pretty much leave it alone right up until the end, because you want to. If you want it to be accurate, you want to make sure that it evacuates all of the uh, all of the all of the uh, water out of the tank first. Which means you got to lean this small hole down so it's the, so that this little the small eighth-inch hole is the lowest point in the tank right at the end. Up until about the last uh, last inch or so, it really doesn't matter the angle as long as it's not blowing gas out. Anyways, what this, like I said, what this is for is not to compete against anybody else. It's a way to me ha to have a consistent way of measuring it. It don't have to be a 500 milliliter bottle like this. I mean, you could use a much smaller bottle. There's a, a small 350 milliliter bottle you could use as a standard for your own personal testing. So like you could always, you'd always have the exact same measurement every single time that you did this. Uh, and that way you'd know that if you're going fast, if you're better than you were before, better or worse than you were before. Anyways, uh, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you should do this. I'm just saying that, uh, that, that whole uh, HAO, me, HAO, HAO, uh, HHO meter, HHO meter. Uh, is a difficult project and it's you know it's for what I needed it to do it was much more complicated than it needed to be this is uh, this is very simple and it's repeatable so as long as somebody got the exact same bottle I did they could do the exact same test and we'd be comparing apples to apples so I'm not saying it's the right way to go I'm just saying it's the way I'm going to be measuring my my gas. It's it's simple, it's repeatable, and it's cons it'll be consistent. All right, uh, this is Luther P40 uh, signing off. Thank you very much for taking the time to to watch my videos. Take care.